Hello, this is the 27th video on my multivariable calculus course. In this video, we're going to talk about uh, the fundamental theorem of line integrals. So let f be a conservative vector field. The line integral can be evaluated using the fundamental theorem of line integrals. It tells you you can find a potential function and then you can evaluate the potential function at the endpoints and then you subtract. This is quite similar to when we had integration in single variable functions. So when we wanted to evaluate the integral of say x from 0 to 1, we found one antiderivative and then we evaluated from 0 to 1. So this was the way we evaluated um, definite integrals. Now here it tells us that if you have a vector field that is the gradient of a function, you uh, look at your potential function and you evaluate your potential function at the end point, at the terminal point, and you subtract the potential function at the initial point. So let's see why this is, this is in fact true. So if you look at your our integral over C of gradient of f dot dr, that can be written as partial of f with respect to x, partial of f with respect to y, partial of f with respect to z, dot product of that with x prime of t, y prime of t, z prime of t, that's dr dt and then from initial to terminal. When we evaluate this dot product, we get integral from a to b, partial of f with respect to x, times derivative of x plus partial of f with respect to y, times derivative of y, plus partial of f with respect to z, times derivative of z, all of that dt. Now, if you look at this function f, it is in, in terms of x, y, and z, and x and y and z are in terms of t. So if you look at the chain rule, it's exactly this expression that we wrote down here. So what does it mean? It means this is just integral from a to b of f of x, y, x of t, y of t, z of uh, uh, z of t. And it is derivative of that function with respect to t. So it's derivative of this with respect to t dt. So what is the integral of derivative with respect to t? It's the integral. So it's f of terminal, when we plug in b, minus f of initial, which is exactly what we had in the uh, fundamental theorem of line integrals. So now let's do a couple of examples on that. So the first example gives us a curve from 1, 0, 0 to 0, 1, 1, and they also gave us the parametrization of the curve, and they asked us to evaluate this line integral. So there are, let's just start with solution 1, which is using what we had learned before, which is using the parametrization, and then plugging the parametrization into a line integral and evaluating that. So x would be cosine cubed of t, y would be 2t over pi, and z would be sine to the fourth of t. And then we have to find the limits of t. So at 1, 0, 0, we get the second component is 2t two, two over pi. That must be 0, so that gives us t equals 0. At the next point, which is 0, 1, 1, we have 2t two, two over pi is equal to 1. That gives us t equals pi over 2. So the limits of integration are going to be from 0 to pi over 2. So now we can we can take the parametrization and plug it into the vector field, which is y e to the x y, x e to the x y, and sine of z. And then uh, differentiate x, differentiate y, differentiate z, plug it in there and evaluate. As you see, this is going to get really, really messy. So let's do this and see what happens. So if replacing y into the formula, we get 2t over pi e to the power of x times y. x is cosine cubed of t times y 2t over pi times dx. We'll have to take the derivative of x. That would be 3, sine square, three cosine squared of t. 
So that's derivative of cosine cubed times derivative of sine cosine, which is negative sine. Now plus x times e to the xy, x is cosine cubed, so it's cosine cubed of t, e to the xy, which is cosine cubed of t, 2t over pi, times dy. dy is 2 over pi dt, because it is 2 over pi t. So that's the derivative of that, plus derivative of sine, uh, sine of z, which is sine of sine to the fourth of t times derivative of sine which is four the uh, derivative of z which is four sine cubed times cosine of t dt so as you see this is a pretty complicated integral to evaluate now it is possible to ev evaluate this integral but as you see this is a uh, pretty complicated so if you were to evaluate this integral this is going to be very uh, very tricky integral You'll have to do a u sub for this one because its derivative is right here. And once you notice, look at this uh, term. This term is the same. And if you factor that term, its derivative is going to be 2t over pi times 3 uh, cosine squared t times minus sine t plus cosine cubed times 2 over pi. In fact, the remaining portion, this portion, this portion, this portion, and this portion, is going to be the derivative of cosine cubed times 2t over pi, which means you'll have to do a u sub for this one. So as you see, this is a pretty the tricky integral to evaluate. It is possible, but it's a pretty tough one. So I'm going to skip that. I'm going to do the solution that is related to the fundamental theorem of line integrals. So instead of doing that, we can find a potential function if this vector field is uh, conservative. So we'll see if we can find a potential function. So the x component is f sub x, y component is f sub y, and z component is f sub z. Partial of f respect to x must be the first component, which is y e to the xy. Partial of f respect to y is x e to the xy and partial of f respect to z is sine of z. Okay, so we'll go ahead and evaluate f from here. f is going to be integrating y e to the xy, we get e to the xy, and then plus a function of y and z. We take that and plug it into the second equation. We get f sub y is x e to the xy plus g sub y is equal to x e to the xy. So that tells us g sub y is equal to 0, which means g, which is a function of y and z, would be a function of z alone. Taking that and plugging that into here, into this star, we're going to get f is equal to e to the xy plus h of z. Taking that and plugging into the third equation, so this is equation number 3. I'm going to number these equations. We are going to get derivative of this with respect to z, which is h prime of z, is equal to sine of z. So from here, we can get h of z. So h of z is going to be negative cosine of z. Now, this is going to be one potential function, but we only need one potential function, so we don't need the plus c. The same way that when we were doing the integral of x, we only needed one potential function, x over x squared over 2, and we called this an antiderivative. So think about a potential function as basically a, um, an antiderivative. So this means f equals e to the xy minus cosine of z is a potential function. Now that we found a potential function, we can apply the fundamental theorem of line integrals. So by the fundamental theorem of line integrals, the line integral that they gave us, uh, y e to the xy dx plus x e to the xy dy plus sine of z dz is equal to, we can evaluate the uh, potential function at the endpoints and then subtract. 
So the terminal point is 0, 1, 1, and the initial point is 1, 0, 0. So 0, 1, 1, and 1, 0, 0. So we're going to plug in these values into our potential function. e to the xy, that's e to the 0, minus cosine of z, which is cosine of 1, minus e to the xy, which is 0, minus cosine of z, which is 0. And this is pretty easy to evaluate. So that's 1 minus cosine of 1. Because both of these are 1. Okay, so now as a consequence of the fundamental theorem of line integrals, we realize that if we have a conservative vector field, if you have gradient of f, which is a conservative vector field, then the value of this line integral doesn't depend on the curve itself. It only depends on the endpoints. So if I have two different curves uh, with the same orientation, line integral of uh, gradient would be the same over these two curves. So these two line integrals are going to be the same. This phenomenon is called independent of path. So what does it mean? It means line integral does not depend on path. It only depends on the endpoints. So let's do one more example on this one. They gave us a vector field and they're asking us to show that this line integral is independent of path. In order to show that it is independent of path, we will have to show that it is in fact conservative. So we will show f is conservative. In other words, we'll have to find a potential function. So let's find a potential function. We need some f that f sub x is equal to the first component, which is x over x squared plus y squared plus z squared to the power of 3 halves. f sub y is equal to y over x squared plus y squared plus z squared to the power of 3 halves. f sub z is equal to z over x squared plus y squared plus z squared to the power of 3 halves. So we'll integrate the first one. f is going to be, well, derivative of x squared plus y squared plus z squared is 2x with respect to x. So it's right there. So we need a 1 half, and then we have x squared plus y squared plus z squared this is to the power of negative 3 halves, so we have to add 1 to that, we get negative 1 half, but then we have to divide by negative 1 half, so that would be negative 2. Now if we differentiate this, we get negative 1 half, differentiating that gives us negative 1 half, x squared plus y squared plus z squared to the power of negative 3 halves, times derivative of inside. And then negative 1 half and negative 2 cancel, 2 and 1 half also cancel, so we're just going to end up with an x. So that would be an integral of uh, uh, x over um, x squared plus y squared plus z squared to the power of 3 halves. But we, of course, also have a plus g of yz because that's a partial derivative. Now we will take this one and plug it into the second equation. I will number these equations. So from the second equation, we get Derivative of this is going to be negative, so we get negative one half x squared plus y squared plus z squared to the power of negative three halves times the derivative of inside, which is two y plus g sub y. That would have to be equal to y over x squared plus y squared plus z squared to the power of three halves. Now, of course, this is going to be one two times one half. That's one half, that's one. So these two cancel, and we get g sub y is zero, which means g is a function of z only. So I'll write it down like this. Then we plug it into the third equation. If we differentiate, we get, we had a negative sign, so it would be negative, negative one half, and then x squared plus y squared plus z squared to the power of negative uh, 3 halves, and then times the derivative of inside, plus h prime of z, that would have to be the same as z over x squared plus y squared plus z squared to the power of 3 halves. Now this quantity cancels, 
which gives us that h of z would have to be a constant. Now again, I don't need all values of h. I only need one potential function. So this would work. So this works. So this means I get a potential function. So therefore, f of x, y, z equals negative x squared plus y squared plus z squared to the power of negative one half is a potential function. Okay, so now that we found one potential function, and again, we don't need all potential functions, but we do need one potential function. The next uh, part of the problem tells us that, um, uh, asks us to evaluate a line integral. So what do we do? We plug in the two endpoints, and then we subtract. So we are going to evaluate the line integral by evaluating f at the end point minus f at the initial point. And this is by the fundamental theorem of line integrals. So how do we do that? Well, the end point is the second point. It's negative 3, 4, 0. So negative 3, 4, 0. That's the terminal point. And the initial point is 1, 2, 2. So 1, 2, 2. So all we got to do is to substitute that into the formula. So this would be minus 3 squared, which is 9, plus 4 squared, which is 16, plus 0 squared to the power of negative 1 half, minus another minus sign, so that would be plus 1 plus 4 plus 4 to the power of negative 1 half. And the rest is a simple computation. So the first one is going to be negative 1 over um, that's 25 square root of 25 is 5, so that's negative 1 over 5 plus 1 over 3, and that would be our answer. And of course, it can be simplified, but it doesn't really matter for us. To summarize, what we did today was we talked about the fundamental theorem of line integrals, that it tells us that if you have a conservative vector field, in order to evaluate the line integral, you evaluate the potential function at the endpoints, and then you subtract. You have to be careful about the orientation. It has to be f of terminal point minus f of initial point. Saying a vector field is independent of path is the same as saying it is conservative. I will see you in the next video.